Oh, 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 gee, what am I doing? I should be practicing. In this section, I want to show you why it's important to practice on a pillow. Now you might think I'm kidding. I'm not, I'm not kidding at all. I first heard this from Dennis Chambers. Dennis Chambers says that he heard that Buddy Rich used to practice on a pillow to develop wrists and forearms and really strengthen those muscles that we cannot develop on an item like a snare drum or a practice pad that has rebound. Now a good pillow, will have very little rebound. You might find a pillow at home that has none at all. This one has a little bit, but not much. I'm holding the stick in the right spot, the perfect balance point, but I really can't get much rebound. So if I was to actually try a double stroke idea here, nothing, because I really have no rebound there. Okay, now the purpose for this is that you have to do all the work. There is no, no rebound to help you with your doubles, with your singles, and so on and so on and so on. So what you want to start with, I would say, is maybe just some single stroke roll. You know, different volumes, different speeds. Play some accents. You can practice a whole bunch of rudiments that you already know. Go back and try to play rudiments on the pillow. Tough one though is the double stroke roll because the double stroke roll usually requires a rebound. But this is one that I get my students to do, especially the ones that want to be able to do powerful doubles on a floor tom, like an 18 inch floor tom with a two ply head that's really fat and soggy. Killer sound, but no rebound. Well, you try to do a double stroke roll on something like that, it's just not gonna happen. So what we start doing is we eliminate the concept that we talked about originally with the double stroke roll with the rebound, and we have to start playing each note. Right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. So you can see that a lot of my wrist is getting into this technique. A little bit of fingers are helping me out. This is something that I would been, I've been practicing for quite a long time, since the early 90s. And after I heard Dennis Chambers talk about that and seeing how fast he can play, I thought, well, hey man, if it works for him, I'm definitely gonna try that. So you can do that, you can do you know, paradiddles, you can try all kinds of ideas like that. Uh, finger control is definitely a little bit harder because you don't have the rebound to help you out. Probably the best thing about pillow practice is that you're gonna bother no one. So whether you have some parents at home or a wife or a husband that doesn't wanna to listen to you practice, well, you know what? You can sit there and work on your rudiments on a pillow. This, this pillow actually has quite a bit of sound to it, but there are some out there that are so quiet, you know, that you can sit there and practice all day long on the pillow. Now you might still not take me seriously, but I'm dead serious. Just practice as much as you can on something like this and you'll be amazed when you go to the drum set at how you start developing your wrists, your fingers, a little bit of forearms, and just getting used to playing on a real soggy feeling drum. But it's also really gonna help for the real bouncy drums too. So as much as you can, in the back of the van, in the tour bus, on the airplane, just make sure you're not driving anybody crazy. Um, I was on a subway once in New York City and I saw a guy practicing on a pillow on the subway. I didn't talk to him, but I just saw him there and I thought, that's so cool. Everybody else was like sitting away from him. They thought he was nuts. And I'm like worshiping the guy, that's so cool, man. You know, he was sitting there practicing on the subway. It was awesome. So um, definitely, pillow practice. Go for it.